there's a virus called ID7 or red eye spreading through the world. This virus increases stress hormone levels, blocks neural paths, and lowers inhibitions. It causes people to act on impulse, making them do naughty or violent things without a care. The first reported case of ID7 happened 18 months ago in Iowa when a person killed a coworker by repeatedly stabbing him in the face. Since then over a thousand outbreaks have been discovered all over the world, but health organizations promise that mandated quarantines will get rid of the virus by the end of the year. It's been discovered that the virus won't kill people, but those infected or redders will. Since the virus causes people to lose control, Derek becomes the first lawyer to use ID7 as an argument to save an infected client from jail after he murdered a coworker. When Derek joined a law firm, he was idealistic and hopeful for the future. However, the vicious office environment has forced him to become another dishonest lawyer in order to survive and climb the corporate ladder. His virus tactic to win a murder case has earned him a pretty good promotion, but he's lost all sense of self. One morning, Derek arrives at the office and notices Oswald screaming at the receptionist. Derek quickly cuts in and reveals he has a video of Oswald doing the dirty with a co-worker during the company's last Christmas party, threatening to show it to Oswald's wife if he doesn't let the receptionist alone. Oswald is effectively humiliated and leaves. Afterward Derek goes to his office and gets angry when he discovers his favorite mug is missing, so he asks his assistant to find it. Instead, his assistant tells him he's got an important call. Derek answers the phone and gets angrier when he hears his sister, who wants Derek to come to her birthday and reminds him of his painting hobby. Derek turns down both things, shamelessly saying his work is more important. Then Derek has a meeting with Melanie, a client in need of a loan extension to pay her overdue debt. Sadly the person in charge of Melanie's case is Irene, one of the firm's partners. Derek has no chance to influence those decisions and instead he calls security to escort Melanie out. After Melanie leaves, Derek drinks some water without knowing the virus is now reaching him. Moments later, the receptionist tells Derek that their boss John and his right-hand Kara have been saying that Derek messed the Vonda Corp case. This makes Derek angry since Vonda Corp isn't his client, so he rushes out to get an explanation. Meanwhile Oswald keeps on watching the receptionist Jenny while scratching his red eye. Derek gets in the elevator and requests an access code to see Kara, the director of operations. Everyone calls her the siren because she's manipulated her way into John's ear. When he reaches her office, Derek gets even angrier because he sees that Kara took his mug. Derek accuses Kara of setting him up to take the fall for her, however Kara takes out a file that proves Vonda Corp is his client. They can't reach an agreement so they decide to ask John, insulting each other during the whole elevator ride. In John's office, Derek explains the problem and points out the same happens every time Kara fails a case, so she should be fired for being the common denominator. John finds Derek's point interesting and asks him to wait outside while he discusses things with Kara. Losing hope, Derek goes to see his friend and co-worker Ewan, who thinks Derek made things worse by going to John instead of thinking of a plan. Their chat is suddenly interrupted by Kara, who tells Derek he's fired. Derek's fury grows, especially since he knows Kara did the naughty with John to keep him on her side. He announces he'll take his case to the board, also known as the Nine, and demands to have his mug back, but Kara just mocks him while rubbing her red eye. Soon the board makes Derek's termination official and Derek is visited by the head of human resources Lester, also known as the Reaper. He asks Derek to sign a document stating he takes responsibility for the Vonda Corp case, offering an extra huge amount of money as severance pay. While rubbing his red eye, Derek turns down the offer because this would ruin his career and he could even be disbarred. Lester doesn't care one bit and quickly calls security to escort Derek out. At that moment CDC agents and a SWAT team surround the building, announcing the company is now under quarantine because the virus has been detected inside. Derek watches how everyone starts freaking out in the lobby while the board talks to the CDC team leader, who explains they're releasing a neutralizer into the building's ventilation system that will eliminate the virus in eight hours. The leader reminds them that everyone must try their best to remain calm or things will get violent very quickly. However the board's main concern is that their employees won't be working for eight hours and it will cost them money. John furiously hits the table with a golf club and announces that any person that tries to avoid working will be terminated. Downstairs, Oswald's frustration is quickly enhanced by the virus and he attacks Derek, who quickly loses it too and stabs Oswald's foot before he starts beating him up. Ewan rushes to calm him down and after Derek punches another random guy, Ewan pushes him against the wall and advises him to hide in his office until the virus is gone. Derek pretends to agree but as soon as Ewan turns around, Derek runs to the elevator, ignoring all the chaos forming in every corner of the office. It's been only a few minutes but people are already getting incredibly violent and screaming over the silliest things. Derek asks the elevator operator to take him to the board's office, however the operator has received strict orders and gives him a different code. Suddenly Derek is dropped in an abandoned floor and is found by John's personal henchman team led by Colton, also known as the Bull. Colton takes Derek's phone and gives him a few punches before calling John, who starts mocking Derek when he says he only wants his job back. While Colton continues to punch Derek and throwing pepper spray at him, Ewan arrives to help his friend, attacking Colton's fellow henchman. 
however their trained guards and Ewan is just an office boy, so he gets killed when he's pushed against a wall and his head is impaled on a nail. John isn't bothered by this because everything that happens in the office for the following 8 hours can be blamed on the virus and therefore they can't be arrested for it. Derek is trying to mourn Ewan's death only for Colton to punch him and knock him out. Moments later Derek wakes up and sees Melanie, who is still angry at him for not helping her. They start spitting at each other and soon it escalates into actual punching, but after some damage Derek realizes they should be actually be teaming up against the company since it's wrong them both. Melanie agrees, so Derek grabs a bunch of old broken phones and puts them together to call Frank, the CEO of Vonda Corporation Frank makes the board join the call too, including John who has been busy consuming happy powder. Derek informs Frank of all the ways his co-workers have mishandled Vonda Corp's case, clearing his name in the process. Frank is angry that John tricked him and decides his company won't need his services anymore, which is a big deal because Vonda was their biggest client. A fuming John orders his henchmen to kill Derek. When two men make it to the abandoned floor, Melanie distracts them so Derek can attack them from behind, putting all the frustration he's bottled up through the years into his punches until the men are dead. Then Derek takes their keys to open the tool shed so he and Melanie can gear up. The duo wants to get to the board for revenge, but they'll need a high-level keycard since the elevator operator isn't giving out codes. In his office, Lester is trying to keep his emotions in check by taking care of his bonsai but he ends up destroying the poor thing. He gets tired of the screaming and leaves his office just in time for Melanie to shoot a nail at him. Lester catches it with his cane and runs back into his office, holding the door closed against Derek's pushing. At that moment two guards arrive and brings Melanie down with a taser, so Derek throws a cart at them and runs away. While Derek sneaks around to avoid his violent co-workers, Lester comes out and starts hitting Melanie with his cane. Eventually Derek manages to surprise a guard from behind, stabbing him with a screwdriver. Then he stops the taser with a file and stabs the other guard too. At that moment Melanie kicks the nail gun toward him and Derek fires at Lester, who quickly hides in his office again. The duo bursts in and demands the keycard, threatening to kill Lester if he doesn't cooperate. Lester puts the keycard on his desk and when Derek reaches to grab it, Lester stabs his hand with a pair of scissors to get him stuck on the desk before tackling Melanie to the ground. Other workers gather at the door and start placing bets while they watch Lester trying to kill Melanie with the nail gun, who struggles to dodge the nails. Derek reminds her that she has a saw as well and Melanie immediately uses it to attack Lester, killing him. Afterward Melanie removes the scissors to free Derek and shoots the people at the door to clear the way. Next Derek prints some files and makes Melanie film him as he reads the technique he used in his old case to make the virus justify certain actions, finishing his speech by starting a fire. This video is sent to the board as a way to warn them he's coming for them without fear of consequences. A terrified John calls Kara and asks her to destroy her keycard but she refuses because it's her leverage. However she quickly agrees when John promises to make her partner. After hanging up, Kara reveals she was lying and orders her assistant Meg to hide the keycard somewhere safe. Next John calls the CDC team leader to ask for help, consuming his happy powder during the conversation. When the team leader calls him out on it, John furiously destroys the screen and sends out a message, he'll pay 150 grand to whoever kills Derek. Irene points out that since it's murder, it should actually be 450. With four hours of virus left, Derek and Melanie use Lester's keycard to make it to Kara's floor, where people are also violently attacking each other. The duo meets with Kara, who has a team of employees behind her as bodyguards. At that moment, the CDC psychologist calls and tries to reason with Derek, who ignores him and makes Melanie play some loud music instead. Kara moves out of the way as Derek gives her employees a last chance to leave, but nobody does. A vicious fight ensues during which Derek and Melanie are completely taken over by the virus, which helps them kill every employee coming after them with merciless attacks using various tools and even a fire extinguisher. After several minutes of non-stop violence, Derek and Melanie finally enter Kara's office and Derek puts the scissors on the table as an indirect threat while asking for the keycard to the top floor. Kara asks for a truce and when Derek refuses, she smashes his mug just to provoke him. Derek almost kills her, but Kara reminds him she's the only one that can get him the keycard. They agree on a truce and Kara asks Meg to bring the keycard. However what Meg brings is a burned piece of plastic and she explains that John knew Kara would betray him, so he offered Meg a promotion in exchange for destroying the keycard. Kara and Meg then start yelling at each other until Meg grabs the scissors and kills Kara. Then Derek and Melanie send John a video showing him Kara's tongue. Since they can't go anywhere without the keycard, the duo decides to take a break. Derek shares that his sister gave him the mug as a gift for being accepted at the company, which is why it was so important to him. Then he takes a look at Melanie's paperwork and notices that just a signature from a board member could solve all her problems. He admits he made a mistake in not helping her and apologizes. At that moment he receives a video from John, who appears peeing on Yuan's body. Derek starts crying as he remembers that Ewan had children, blaming his reaction on the virus making emotions more intense. Melanie feels the same and suddenly the duo starts kissing, which quickly escalates into getting dirty. After they're done, Derek gets an update on his phone from Ray, the IT guy. 
It's been announced that now only the bosses are allowed to use the elevator. This gives Derek an idea, so he and Melanie go to see Ray. They threaten him with their tools and make him hack into Irene's computer, which Ray happily does because he hates her too. He makes her computer malfunction and when she calls to ask for help, Ray rants at her before sending her a file. Irene installs it thinking it's a patch to fix her issue, but it's actually a virus that allows Ray to steal all her information. He puts it in a hard drive before Derek calls Irene, telling her to come down for it. A desperate Irene asks John for the keycard, assuring him it'll be fine because she chose the meeting spot, which happens to be where Colton hid his gun. Minutes later, Irene meets with Derek and Melanie in a closed office and Derek makes sure she isn't armed before starting the negotiations. Irene reaches under the table and finds nothing, so Derek reveals he already took the gun. He uses it to force Irene to give up the keycard and then Melanie asks her to sign her paperwork, however Irene points out she'll later claim insanity under the effect of the virus so her signature will be considered invalid. Furious, Melanie destroys the hard drive with a hammer and asks Derek for some privacy. Derek tries to leave the room only for Colton to hit him with the door. Irene attacks Melanie at the same time that Derek tries attacking Colton, who easily overpowers him and starts beating him up. Then he retrieves his gun and wastes the shots on random objects, explaining bullets are for cowards before putting on some brass knuckles. Derek manages to dodge an incoming punch and stabs Colton with a screwdriver, but Colton isn't bothered and throws Derek on the ground. Then he tries using his paper spray on Derek, who catches the liquid in his mouth and spits it at Colton's eyes to escape. Now his mouth is burning so he runs to the water cooler for relief. Meanwhile Melanie hits Irene on the head with a glass and has an opening to grab her hammer, but before she can strike, Irene reveals the card needs an access code to work. At that moment Derek comes back and demands the code, so Irene offers to tell him if in exchange he lets her have Melanie. There are only 25 minutes of quarantine left, so Derek punches Melanie and ties her to a chair. While Irene gets her tools ready for torture, Derek gives Melanie one last kiss before leaving. Irene enters the password in the elevator and before the doors close, Derek smiles, revealing some bolts in his hand. It turns out he took them off the chair while kissing Melanie to free her, and now she comes out to finally kill Irene with a hammer. On the way to the top floor, Derek remembers all the things John has put him through and his face is punched in frustration. He enters the board's room covered in blood, only for the nine to receive him with an applause and champagne. John offers him a partnership contract and his secretaries start listing all the benefits Derek would get if he agrees to a truce, including some naughty times with them. However Derek still refuses, causing a secretary to attack him with a broken glass. Derek quickly dodges it and the other secretary gets killed instead before he knocks out the first one with a punch. Next John grabs his golf club and consumes more happy powder before fighting Derek, throwing powder at his eyes to blind him. John hits him with the club a couple of times before tossing him on the table, trying to choke him to death. Derek pushes him off and takes out a piece of his broken mug to start hitting John with it, finally overpowering him. With only 1 minute and 30 seconds of quarantine left, Derek holds John over the railing and makes the board vote. Everyone is in favor of John's death so Derek throws him to the lower floors to kill him. Afterward Derek gathers the remaining eight board directors and offers a speech on why he deserves his job back. As the board agrees to rehire him, Derek finally realizes his sister was right, he didn't have a job, the job had him. He was just another slave to the grind. When the board offers him John's spot, Derek accepts it, signs Melanie's paperwork, and then quits. Once it's all over, the CDC announces that, thanks to the mess in the law firm they've collected enough testing to make a vaccine. Derek starts spending his time painting, and lots of his art shows the experience he went through. Melanie is dating him and even attends the painting classes with him. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.